gets a lot of fly ball outs, a lot of strikeouts because of that. James Madison made the trip from Harrisonburg, Virginia, here to Columbia, Missouri, in style. A private charter jet for a team that's used to traveling by bus. They are 37 and one, and we are off and running in Columbia as Kate Gordon steps in to start it off for JMU. Just one of three unseeded teams left in the postseason. And things have gone well for those other two so far. Virginia Tech against UCLA and Georgia earlier today against Florida. See if the Dukes can keep up that streak. Yeah, not easy to do. Very few teams have made it to the Women's College World Series having been unseated, but we have two unseated teams in the driver's seat at this point, Super Regionals. Head coach for JMU is Lauren Laporte in her fourth year at the helm, ninth year overall there, and in her third straight year, having won CAA Coach of the Year. This is a team where at this point in the season, there's a liner to short, and Gordon is retired. With the postseason experience that they have over the last several seasons, 2019 most recently, these are the players who know how to win here. There's not a lot of coaching other than small tweaks here or there that she's got to do. Just a phenomenal player there with, with Coach Laporte. Just very proud to have her team in this spot. This is a familiar spot for James Madison. There's not many teams in the country who can say this is their third Super Regional in the last five years. Sarah Jubish, the redshirt junior. Takes in the dirt. Came up clutch for them, the native of Pennsylvania. Hit a two-run double. And their regional in the 10th inning to give them the lead over Liberty. So they went 3-0 through their regional, as did the Tigers, although it was not as easy as a ride as Mizzou had here in Columbia. Duke's the only non-Power 5 program still playing. That's up and away, and it's 2-1 and one on Jubis. And that was big when we talked to Coach Laporte. You know, she, she takes that very personally, feels like this team can compete and has proven they can compete with anyone in the country. Doesn't really like that mid-major title. They're doing what Gonzaga did for men's basketball and hoping to do that here for softball as well, showing that their performance speaks for itself at the level at which they play. 3-1 is coming back our way. And it's 3-2 and two on Jubis. Their only loss of the year came against Elon, the back end of a doubleheader. And that's one thing that she says, they downright beat us. I don't like to make excuses about it, but to come in here into the postseason and not have that number zero on the right side of your win-loss takes a little bit of pressure off because then you don't have everybody asking you, well, do you feel the pressure of that? No, it's not easy. You know, she mentioned that. It's, you know, that, that's what the talk becomes, like being undefeated uh, versus winning a title, winning a regional, winning a super regional, getting to the World Series. So even though as a coach, she didn't like that blemish, as, as you mentioned, she, she felt like it was good for her team and, and not become the conversation anymore. But to have a 27 game win streak, the longest active win streak in Division I. Jubis had a battle going with Weber, grounds it over to Wirt at third. Weber in the circle has set down the first two batters here for JMU. This is something Jordan Weber does so well, just controls hitters. Not going to have a lot of strikeouts. That's not her game. Averages about five per game, but is able to control the hitters. Gets a lot of fly ball outs, a lot of strikeouts. Really disrupts the timing of hitters. 
Now it's Odyssey Alexander, who's going to be in the circle here in the bottom of the first inning. The only pitcher on their roster who you'll see hit. She has just had an absolutely phenomenal postseason. Two away and nobody on top of the first. And she skies that out to the left side of the infield, layered from short as the wind carries it toward the line, makes the grab, and the inning is over. One, two, three, first for Weber. The Tigers come to the plate against Alexander next. The fans have packed the house to see the Missouri Tigers and the James Madison Dukes. Let's look at the Capital One starting lineup for Missouri. Head coach Marissa Anderson and Hattie Moore. She's had quite a regional as this team scored 19 runs in their three wins to advance here to Supers. And Hattie Moore was a huge part of that. You look at those numbers at the bottom. And she is a power threat every time she steps in the box. Also has a career high 17 home runs on the season. And Odyssey Alexander, the redshirt senior, starting pitcher for James Madison. You wouldn't be surprised if she threw every pitch here at Supers after she threw 355 in their three games last weekend. Just battles and competes and grind and has matured so much throughout her career. She's ready to handle that workload. You're going to see her work up and down in the zone. East-West, a curveball, screwball combination also has developed a changeup this season, which has been a difference maker for her. Brooke Wilmess, the leadoff hitter here for Mizzou, takes ball one. And that changeup has been the difference maker. She saw what it did for a pitcher. A lot of JMU fans will know Megan Good saw what that pitch did for her late in her career. Odyssey Alexander has added that as well. Throws very hard, can heat the ball to 70 miles an hour. That ball is torched foul down the right field line. Wilmess turned on it. One ball and one strike. native of Iowa from suburban Des Moines. She and Kendall Lindemann of Florida representing for the Des Moines area here in the postseason. She can lay down the bunt, she can hit it to the gaps, she can knock it over the wall. Back to the screen and it's one and two. And, and when you watch Missouri swing, as we mentioned a little earlier, I mean, they take their hats. They swing aggressively, they swing confidently, and of all the hitters in the lineup, the one hitter that really has the swing that can change the whole momentum of the game, it's Brooke Wilmes. A roller over to second, Nyokas from the outfield grass, gets it quickly over to Shiflet at first base, and that's one away. Next up is the SEC Freshman of the Year, Following in the footsteps of Montana Fouts, Mia Davidson, Kayla Arnold, Kayla Arnold, and first team all SEC, Jenna Laird. This will be a great matchup to watch here tonight and this weekend between Alexander and Laird. Well, and, and with Missouri, really you have Wilmus and then you have Laird. You really have two leadoff hitters in this in this lineup, just both very confident hitters have performed consistently all season long, each one a triple threat as well. It's off the hands behind the circle, and just a few short steps for Alexander to retire Laird. And this is exactly what Alexander wants, trying to prevent Missouri from barreling up the ball, squaring up the ball. That is what Missouri does so well. That's why they're in the top five in the nation, on base percentage, slugging percentage, hitting. And so far, Alexander's been able to stretch the zone, move the ball through the zone, both Wilmus and Laird, not able to barrel it up, got handcuffed, not getting all of the ball. First two kept it on the infield. Hattie Moore will try and put it a little bit further out. She takes ball one against Alexander, who has shown her propensity for the strikeout. Struck out 19 
in their 10 inning game against Liberty to open the regional in Knoxville last weekend on 163 pitches. And she's got a very crowded trophy case at this point in her career. After being the CAA Rookie of the Year in 2017, Player of the Year in 18 and 19, and then this year the conference's Pitcher of the Year. I mean, Odyssey Alexander is another one of those pitcher utility players. She pitches and hits in the lineup. And when you see someone like that, you just know they're a good athlete. And that is the one word used to describe Odyssey Alexander all the time, how athletic she is. And her athleticism allowed her to learn that off-speed pitch, that change-up late in her career. She's even on board two and two. So she started all three games, finished one of them off. The 19 strikeouts, by the way, was only building on what she had done in the conference tournament when she set the CAA tournament single game record with 16 strikeouts. And in the process, she has also established a James Madison school record with 19. She gets strike three there. Strikeout number one in the books. So is inning number one. Both teams go down one, two, three in the first. Weber and Alexander are the start of this Columbia Super Regional. Mizzou and JMU scoreless to the second. The NCAA Softball Super Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Second straight trip to Supers and third overall for James Madison. The Dukes from Harrisonburg, Virginia. In 2016, they won the Ann Arbor Regional. In 2019, they hosted and won their regional and lost in a third game against LSU for the right to go to the Women's College World Series. So this is a roster stacked with talent that knows what it takes and has felt the agony of losing in this round as well, being just one win away. Well, and anyone that's been around the softball world knows James Madison is a word synonymous with the postseason. Winning regionals, they hosted that super regional in 2016. And this is a team that knows how to win. This is a very experienced roster ready for this opportunity. Logan Newton out of Florida, second team all CAA this year, whose older sister Taylor also played at James Madison, 2014 to 2017. Also an outfielder as well. well and, you, and you look at JMU's record and you say, okay, they've played 38 games. Missouri's played 56 games, you know, is, and, and Coach Laporte talked about, we, we think that's a good thing because we have an experienced team. You know, we did, they didn't need those extra non-conference games early in the year to kind of, you know, rotate their roster, get some younger players some experience. This is a very experienced team. So when they hit the ground running, they were ready to go right off the gate. And right now, her team's feeling very fresh, having played only 38 games. Weber comes up with a strikeout, her first, and starts off the night retiring the first four batters. Watch how Weber spins the ball to the outer half of the plate. That ball is driving away from Newton, no chance. So a solid start for Weber, building off of what she did in her two appearances in their first three postseason games. And it's Madison Niokas in this lineup is an imperative to keep off the base paths She's gone 23 for 23 in stolen base drives this year. And one to the Chicago native who pulls back and takes ball one. JMU is not, they don't have a slapper in the lineup. Very unique for a team to not have that. But Niokas, as you mentioned, with her speed, she does have the ability to beat out a bunt as well. 
Lift one in the air, sending Shomo back. Warning track wall, and it's a foul ball. Two hundred down the line to left, and she cleared that probably about fifteen or twenty feet. The fans looking a, a little bit stunned as well. Niokas gets into one. This was hit about as high as it was far, and it is just foul, keeping James Madison off the scoreboard. You know that guy's the smartest one in the ballpark tonight? Because he's the warmest one. <laughs> it's the type of night where a breeze headed in your direction can send a shiver down your spine and make you wish you'd pack that one extra layer. One and two after a very long strike. It had been rainy over the last couple of days here in Columbia. And tomorrow, with the first pitch time a couple hours earlier, the temperature should probably be about 10 or 15 degrees warmer. So a little bit of an anomalous weather day here in mid-Missouri. Good at bat here from Niokas, just battling. Weber's working both sides of the plate. Continues to work that upper half of the zone. Niokas just missing a few of these pitches as she's timing, timing her up. Weber's 2-2, she got her to chase upstairs. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Well, Weber, knowing that Niokas was being very aggressive, goes, throws one out of the strike zone. Niokas can't hold back, and that's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Weber. Now she'll see one of the more patient batters in the James Madison lineup. Lindsey Meeks, their third baseman. First team all CAA this year, and also Led the league in walks. She's really come on this year, had started just 15 games over the course of her career prior to this season, and has started all of them this year for the Dukes. Now Coach Laporte calls her the, the hype man, so to speak, of the team. Lots of energy. Lots of enthusiasm. Really keeps the team going. She just gets a piece of the 0-2 and keeps the inning going as well. Well, and right now, Jordan Weber's working at a very quick tempo. Getting the ball, getting the signal, and off she goes. If I'm James Madison, I'm, I'm going to slow her out of that rhythm. Especially this inning. Last inning, you didn't see it so much. First inning, maybe a little nerves, but this inning, she has settled in. And she strikes out the side in the second. Six up and six down for Jordan Weber. She's got the Dukes on their heels to start. This is the party that every player wants to be at. It's going to be passionate softball for sure. Back to crown a national champion for the first time since 2019. They get to chase history here. We started with 64 teams down to just 16 and then eight will go on to the Women's College World Series playing best two out of three series this weekend. And the action starts Thursday from Oklahoma City. Around the Supers, you had Mary Wilson Avent with a great performance for Georgia to blank Florida, Oklahoma State. Six of their seven hits were for extra bases. And Virginia Tech, how about that? One of the unseated teams like Georgia and JMU off to a great start. I mean, UCLA is the defending national champion. Did not look like it yesterday. A season high five airs. And Virginia Tech, led by Keeley Rochard, really dominated that game. That was a, a very unusual performance, not only error-wise, but also pitching-wise, too, from UCLA, no? 
And, and Virginia Tech, we talked about it during the ACC season. They're a tough team to beat when it's a when it's a one game situation. When Keely Burchard only has one game a day, their offense up and down the lineup. They have speed. They have power. And uh, you're right. I think they they shell shocked UCLA a little bit in this, not only in the circle, but just uh, throughout the entire game. Kim Wirt leads it off. She's already said she'll be back for a fifth year next year with the extra year granted to athletes due to COVID. So she picked up a double major to come back and play one more year at Mizzou. Big power from Wirt. She and Hattie Moore hitting three and four respectively. Each with 17 home runs. Helen Word has that, and I call you know goofy power. I mean, when she when she unloads on one, it's uh, you know it's not one that barely clears the wall. It it kind of goes through the scoreboard. And, <laughs> you know, you can see it on defense as well when she throws the ball. Just a very powerful athlete has an absolute cannon for an arm as well. Alexander's two two pitch tails away, and it's three and two. On the transfer from Hofstra in her third season with the Tigers. She swings through the payoff pitch to strike out Bonanza in Columbia at the moment. The last five batters have come to the plate have struck out. Well, and these pitchers are dealing high velocity as Alexander gets that late break on the ball and, and just the speed on the pitch threw it right by Wirt. And this is the area where Alexander has grown the most just as her coach mentioned, Coach Lauren Laporte said she has learned to embrace the hard. She has really matured in those situations and has handled those situations. Might have been a little, let her emotions get the best of her when she was a younger pitcher, but now she has settled in. Well, and as so many players do, she benefited from having another excellent pitcher in front of her to watch in her earlier years. You have someone like Megan Good, who also was a pitcher utility, you know, kind of showed her the blueprint, how you can get it done. And Alexander gets ahead on Kayla Kessinger. Nothing and two. Where the next base runner of this game will be the first. Off the end of the bat, into center field, on the run. Sullivan tracks it for the second out. And one big thing for Alexander this year was, you go back to when they lost their only game of the year. It was in a doubleheader against Elon in late March. She was injured then. She was out for about four weeks with a hamstring injury. And Coach Laporte said that changed her perspective on things. And even beyond that month that she was out, that her mentality changed in the last 12 to 18 months. But I think for anybody, when you're away from something that you love, and that she deals strike one to Cassidy Shomo, becomes a defining part of your identity, which is so true for college athletes of any sport. And then you don't have it, you think about it, and you appreciate it even more when you are able to return. It's tough to watch from the dugout. And, but credit Alexander really used that as a growth opportunity. And you do, you see things a little differently from the dugout. You kind of watch how hitters, hitters approach, you know, how your defense is playing. You know, different parts of the game, how, how everything moves in rhythm. And, and when she had the chance to get back out there, there's nobody more excited. She is regularly 68, 69, 70 here in the first couple innings with her velocity. Yeah, I just, you can just, you can feel it, you can hear it, the pop of the glove, you can just, and she's so smooth. There's just no wasted motion going on right now within her delivery. 
Very steady. And this, this, Alexander is someone who she comes in fourth in the country in strikeouts per seven innings, double digits. Just really has learned to manage the game, control the game, and being able to move the ball through different parts of the zone, up, in, out. And that's something we've seen so far in this game as well. And this Missouri lineup, this is one of the top hitting teams in the country. It's, they lead the SEC in many offensive categories. They in Kentucky, the top two hitting teams. And so far, they haven't been able to square one up. That's due to Alexander and her ability to move the ball through the zone. 3 2 for Shelmo. We'll see at least once more. James Madison and Missouri. No score, no base runners, as Jordan Weber has started off by retiring the first six that she's faced. Odyssey Alexander looking to mirror that. And we welcome those of you who just saw Arizona take care of business against Arkansas with their victory. We are just a couple innings in here in Columbia, Missouri on a chilly night to open this Super Regional. First game of a best two out of three. I'm Mike Cousins along with Carol Bruggeman, the former Division I coach. And we've got two teams that are trending in the right direction here. The offenses have been quiet so far tonight. As Shomo at first is the first base runner of the game. But James Madison, a team that comes in with just one loss this year against a hot hitting Missouri team that it's pitching really turned on in their regional as both went 3-0 to get here to the second round of the postseason. Emma Robbie with two out and Shomo on over at first base. She turns that Alexander 71 mile an hour pitch into a long foul ball down the left field line. And if you can square one up with that type of velocity, it can go a long way. Sure, ball comes in hard, it goes out hard. There's, there's no doubt about it. That's actually the first ball we've seen all evening from this very high powered Missouri offense that's, that's been barreled up. gets a piece of Burnett behind the plate. And everybody's good. I mean, this is a freshman catching Alexander, you know, who's, who's been at JMU for a very long time. Not an easy task. Someone's throwing 70 miles an hour consistently, moving it through the zone, but Burnett's done a really nice job this season. That ball gets off her glove. Shomo goes down to second base. She's there uncontested. It's the first runner in scoring position of the night for either side. And Alexander goes to the off-speed pitch, and it just, Burnett can't get her glove up quick enough. 
always want to be quicker than the ball. And in that particular instance, her glove was still moving up as the ball, and that thus result in the tip going back. Missouri having their first runner in scoring position. Alexander still just a pitch away from working herself out of trouble, and she does with her third strikeout of the night. We'll go to the third scoreless in Columbia. If you started along with us tonight on ESPN News, head over to ESPNU. 355 pitches to help them advance here to take on Mizzou. 27 game winning streak. And 62 days since their only loss of the season. Just one of three unseeded teams remaining in the bracket. Virginia Tech and Georgia are the other two. And both have been victorious in their first games. Virginia Tech will play for a trip to Oklahoma City later on tonight from the West Coast. Three quick pitches to go right through Hallie Hall. Jordan Weber is on a tear. And she struck out four in a row. Couple more NBA playoff game threes for you tomorrow night on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the app. The Sixers take on the Wizards at seven. Then Ja Morant and the Grizzlies host Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz with a countdown crew starting our coverage at six Eastern. Well, Carroll here as Weber gets a swing and a miss from Lauren Burnett. What are you seeing that she's doing so effectively right now? First of all, it starts with her tempo. She has a really good rhythm going, a tempo going. Nothing is disrupting her mojo, so to speak. Second of all, she's throwing that rise at all different levels. She's moving it inside, moving it outside, throwing it low, throwing it high. So she has complete command right now. Hasn't had to go to too many other pitches, been able to really rely on that rise ball. Weber threw a one hitter in the first game of the regional and a seven inning no hitter in the third and final game of the regional. And so the no hitter for her was Mizzou's first in the postseason since 2011 when Chelsea Thomas threw one in six innings against DePaul to win their regional that year. And that's, that's kind of been the, not the missing piece for Missouri, but the, the piece that hasn't been as strong in, in this pitching staff for Missouri is very young. This is a team that's in the top 10 nationally in defensive fielding percentage. They're also in the top 10 in a lot of offensive categories. The pitchers have had their highs and lows throughout the season. And right now in the postseason, they have stepped up, just allowing two hits throughout all three games in the regional last weekend. And three shutouts, and as we just mentioned, the no-hitter from Weber. Her 2-2 two -two skips away from Moore, and it's 3-2 and two on the catcher, Burnett. And what was the number you had calculated? Two for 62 for the opposition in the in the three games of the regional. Yeah, the, the the batting average of those three teams combined in the regional was .032, just just unheard of, really. Completely dominated in the circle. I think the other piece of that was Missouri, as you mentioned earlier, Mike. They've been pitching by committee all season long. It's it's very rare for one pitcher on this Mizzou staff to to go a complete game, but in the regional, coming coming into the regional, just nine complete games from the Missouri team. And in the regional, every pitcher threw a complete game. So that's what you like to see as a coach as well, is Coach Anderson calling the pitches from the sideline. That pitch just misses, and it's the first base runner for the Dukes with one out here in the third. Weber has not worked down in the zone much. Tries to go down there this time. Just misses below the knees. Very close pitch. The JMU has a runner aboard. Each team's lone base runner has reached on a walk. Michelle Sullivan will try and crack the code against Jordan Weber.
This year was the third season in the regional round where Missouri held the opposition scoreless. They did it all the way back in 1991 before anybody on this field was born, and also in 2006. Yeah, you had asked earlier, you know, what's what's making Jordan Weber so good tonight? Another thing about Jordan Weber is her her ball rarely goes straight. You know, it's it's jumping all over the place. It's not like a true rise ball spin where it just kind of stays in the same plane. It it's got some jump to it. Is that something that you can uh, inten intentionally create, or is it something that it just comes off your fingers in a certain way? I just, it, it definitely comes off your fingers in a, in a certain way. It's just the way your hand is held. There's strikeout number five for Weber. She completes her first trip through the JMU lineup. Continues to live on that rise ball. This time it's on the outer half of the plate, a low rise. Sullivan gets caught reaching. Now this will be the second time through the lineup for James Madison. We'll see what type of adjustments they make. Try to stay on top of that rise ball. And this lineup 0 for 8 the first time through. Visit to the circle as, relatively speaking, she's been cruising so far. Well, and Coach Anderson going out to talk to her. I mean, she's not, Weber's not missing those pitches by much, so it's probably a conversation of, all right, if we're, if we're a little off the plate, what do we need to do here to move that in a little bit? Because that, it's that pitch on the outer half of the plate to right-handed batters that's just moving outside. And you see Coach Anderson, what a tremendous job she has done with this program. I think one of the best strategists and pitch callers in the game. She told us earlier in the week, I don't expect another outing like we had last weekend. If we can replicate it, amazing. But you know when you see something like that, how good and how rare it can be for a team that was 10th in the SEC in Team ERA. Well, just shows you the growth and development of this young pitching staff as well. As well. A lot of freshmen, sophomores just getting better and better and better, and they are peaking at the right time of the season. They've always had a strong offense. The defense has been solid all year, and now the pitching is coming together as well. And that's what makes it tough. Throws a pitch about you know, mid-60s right on the outside corner and then comes back right on the inside corner. Saint, just really tough for a hitter. You can't pick one side of the plate. One of the things that she told us as well was they get energy off of their offense. They haven't played in front of huge crowds really very much this year. Helps when you can hold the opposition scoreless as they put up 17, the opponents zero. Getting that no-hitter there from Weber, one of six in the regional round around the country. For perspective, that was the same number thrown in 2019 as well, the last year there was a postseason. Well, and, and there's no question you could feed off the energy of the crowd. And Coach Anderson, her whole staff, just, just talked a lot about that. I mean, this place sold out very quickly for the Super Regional. Folks had their blankets and chairs packed right when the gates open and have loaded the house. Runner at first, two down, and a one-two is the sixth strikeout for Weber. She is on a roll right now through two and a half. Carol, when we got off the air at the end of last weekend, we said Wichita State for Oklahoma nothing. There was no way it was going to hold. We also had no way of knowing that the final score would be a combined 31 runs for this Oklahoma team that has battered its way through the regular season as they hope to get to the Women's College World Series. 
college softball history as well. Tomorrow, set your calendar alerts. Three Eastern, ABC, Oklahoma, and Washington. This is a college softball first and a big one, Carol. Oh, it's so exciting just to keep growing the audience for college softball. And, and there's no teams better than Oklahoma, Washington. Just take a look at what Oklahoma did in their regional scored 50 runs set a new record for regional and it's going to be very very exciting tomorrow to watch that game two oklahoma took game one today but it was a tight one they still got another home run though just not in a conventional way for them and that would be by sending it out of the yard and inside the park home run today from kinsey hansen as nicole may went the distance so they've now hit 143 home runs on the year which puts oklahoma just 15 off the all-time softball record set by Hawaii in 2010. Number eight hitter Kendall Bailey leads off for Missouri here last of the third. He had just one base runner. It was a two-out walk to Cassidy Shomo in the second. As Odyssey Alexander has struck out three in the first two innings. It's been a fun contrast of pitching styles thus far between Alexander for JMU and Weber for Missouri. And both teams trying to adjust to those styles. Weber more spinny, a lot of rise ball up in the zone. Alexander, pure power coming at you east, west, side to side, and up in the zone. But we have, you know, these are good defensive teams. They've yet to be challenged in this game. Not a lot of action for the defense. We've seen a couple of balls down the left field line that have had home run distance, but just not the right trajectory as they swerved foul. 200 down the lines, 220. Straight away center here at Mizzou Softball Stadium. Alexander's 2-2 in the dirt. Burnett completes the strikeout with the throw on to first. Four strikeouts for Alexander as she battles the six for Weber. And this play, look at Burnett, the catcher, has to turn her glove over quickly behind every great pitcher. There's a catcher working really hard back there. Leads with her glove, keeps the ball in front. This is not a strike. The sign of a good pitcher, you can get a lot of swings at moving pitches that are not strikes. And Burnett saved the strikeout. Abby George out of St. Louis. Back into the lineup. After she missed a few weeks with a broken hand, so she's got the cast there on the left hand. Always enjoy a number 99. And to pull the curtain back a little bit, we were talking with Coach Anderson. And these are the esoteric questions that run through my mind of why does a player wear 99? The coach didn't know, so she said, hold on. Hold on, she takes out her phone. She says, I'm gonna text Abby, and she does. And in the time we were on our Zoom, she got a text back and said that Abby told her when she was younger, she didn't like sharing. Not an uncommon trait among young kids. And it was a number that other people wouldn't have. Although here among postseason teams remaining from the SEC, she's got most notably perhaps Kayla Kowalik of Kentucky who also wears 99. Now on Abby George, you know, is a slapper in the nine spot for Missouri. But look how tight James Madison's outfield is playing, especially Kate Gordon out in left field. And that's because Abby George has one extra base hit on the season. So they're really trying to pinch, pinch the field, shorten the field, and take away those singles, those blue pits that may fall between the infield and outfield because at this, this late juncture in the season, you know, to have one extra base hit, James Madison setting their defense accordingly. Only one ball has left the infield. 
from Alexander. That was a fly out to center field. Round out to second, a pop to her at the edge of the circle, and four strikeouts. Account for the putouts for Alexander thus far. And just so focused and so in the zone. Umpires converge for a quick chat there. And they seem to be in accordance with whatever it is they've decided they agree upon. Christina Drum behind the plate. And a cool evening tonight in Columbia. Missouri this year, fourth in the regular season in the SEC behind Florida and Arkansas. They're tied for first, and then Alabama. 15 and nine in the SEC, winning at least one game in every conference series they played this year. It's a battle of a pitch in the upper 60s and a bat angle down the third baseline as the count holds at two and two on George. Now well, we're just waiting for one of these teams to string some hits together or just really challenge the defense. Kate Gordon in left field right now is playing about 10 steps from the infield dirt with two strikes, just trying to take away that, that light fly ball to the left side. Alexander wins the battle against George. So 47 pitches for her first rotation through the starting nine for Missouri. She'll go back to the top with Brooke Wilmes. Home run in all three of their regional games last weekend. She said afterwards she didn't think she had ever done that before. All of them leading off an inning. Marissa Anderson said that for the rest of the team, they get confidence from what she does at the plate. And so that if she gets a hit, everybody else comes up, they feel good. So far tonight, for Will Miss, a ground out to second base. It's just her approach is infectious. You know, she's attacking. We saw her try to drag bun her way on there, just trying to make something happen for the Missouri offense. And she's got the first base hit of the night. She turns around Alexander's pitch, dribbles it through the middle. Wilmes is aboard. Right on time, goes right back up the box. This pitch is a little too much of the plate. One of the first pitches we've seen all night that obviously Alexander has lift left over the white part of the plate and cannot do that against Brooke Wilmes, one of the best hitters in this Missouri lineup. So will this open the door for the rest of this Missouri offense as their center fielder tries to start a two out rally. Brings up the unshakable freshman, Jenna Laird. Her bunt on one hop to third is scooped by Meeks. And the inning is over. Three in the books, no score. When we come back, we'll chat with JMU head coach, Lauren Laporte. No score, JMU coming up here in the fourth. Their head coach, Lauren Laporte, in her fourth season. Lauren, you told us earlier this week you have that loss against Elon at the end of March and that you were glad to have that on your record rather than zero losses. Why? You know, I think it's one of those things that um, when you go undefeated all year, you have that in the back of your mind and you could kind of press a little bit, like I said last week in the interview, and we don't even have to press anymore. And honestly, that loss was good for us. It grounded us, put a chip on our shoulder, and we've been playing well ever since. 
Coach, you have one of the best hitting teams in the nation. Not a lot happening so far. What do you want to see from your team here as the game moves forward? Yeah, I mean, they're both doing a great job um, in the circle. I think, you know, now that we're kind of the second time around, um, I think, you know, we just keep battling, but we got to pass the bat, um, barrel some balls up um, so we can move around and score. Lauren, thanks. Thank you. So the task is simple. The execution, however, remains to be found for JMU as they've struck out six times in the first nine outs of this game and have had just one base runner, a one-out walk last inning in the third. Well, you know, when you when you look at these teams coming in, you say, okay, you know, what, what are their biggest strengths? Well, it's, I mean, offense just hits you in the face. Both of these teams are in the top 15 in the country in almost almost every category across the board with these pitchers. As Coach Laporte mentioned, has really stepped up their game tonight. It's Jubis, Alexander, and then Newton, two, three, and four in the lineup for JMU. Her academic career done at James Madison. And in the fall, she'll be off to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where she'll be starting pharmacy school. And I'll tell you, when you have one team to prepare for, too, all week, it, you know, the, the pitchers, the coaches, they're watching a lot of film. They're preparing for every batter in the lineup. I mean, they've been watching film for days on each other. A flare foul territory up to left, and Shomo with a couple steps to spare runs it down. get the feeling that when Shomo has, you know, what some would call a routine play, she, you know, she's not real happy about that. She needs something a little more challenging every time. I mean, we've seen her be a highlight reel this season with some of the catches she's made out and left. That one not quite as challenging, but she's just been a difference maker in left field for the Tigers this season. Well, if you've been in the chair to read highlights on the Sports Center top 10 this year, you've called Cassidy Shomo's name a couple of times. She has found success here in Columbia after transferring from Louisiana. Sat out last year as a red shirt, spending two years down with the Raging Cajuns. On a strike, pitcher to pitcher. Alexander sends it deep to the right center field gap, and George meets it in front of the warning track for the second. So you called it, Carol, last inning as Kate Gordon came up, turned the lineup over, looking for something a little bit different. After five batters struck out the first time through, here we've seen a little bit more contact. And some aggressive contact. It's, it's going to take it. The wind is blowing in this evening into the ballpark and it's it's a it's uh you know it's got some uh, you know some pace on it so it's going to take a a well hit ball to hit it out this evening but just yes better contact much more on time like what i'm seeing so far from jmu jmu this second time through And there is definitely a vibe in the building tonight with a big crowd, an enthusiastic fan base, knowing that one of these two teams is just two wins away from beginning play in the Women's College World Series next week. Another ball lifted out toward right. This time George tracks it in, and it's another 1-2-3 inning for Jordan Weber, her third in the first four. When we come back, we'll ask her head coach, Larissa Anderson, why she's been so good tonight.
No score last of the fourth, Missouri and James Madison. Mizzou head coach Larissa Anderson, generous to give us a few minutes here. What have you seen so far from Jordan Weber that she's done so well tonight? Uh, working both sides of the play, getting them to swing at some of those borderline pitches to expand that strike zone. Um, she's got real good command right now. Well, Coach, your, your offense has been really prolific all season long. What are you looking for this second time through the lineup? I'm making some adjustments, picking out one side of the plate or, or sitting on a certain speed. I'm not expanding that strike zone, and, and I was real happy with Brooke Wilmes's, and, and you know Jenna just hit that button just a little bit too hard. But I think second time through, we're going to make some adjustments here. And lastly, and most importantly, how are you staying warm? I'm dancing around in the dugout <laughs> with the rest of the team. All right, there's some good Sean Paul playing right now. We'll yeah. let you go dance. Thanks, Thanks a lot. <laughs> Larissa Anderson, the third-year head coach. Her team's feeling good as they've got the only base hit of the game so far, but nobody has scored just yet as Mizzou stands the heart of the order up here, starting with Hattie Moore. And it's an interesting time of year for Coach Anderson where her husband Patrick, who's spent more than two decades as a pro baseball coach, including almost a decade with the Royals organization, most recently with the Nationals, now gets to watch her team in the postseason He'll be heading out next week to be the first year manager of the Princeton Whistle Pigs. The Princeton Whistle Pigs down in West Virginia in the Appalachian League. They start June 3rd. And if you know college softball, you also know that's the first day of the Women's College World Series. Well, they met at Gannon University in Erie, Pennsylvania, a Division II school. They both ended up at Hofstra, her coaching softball, him baseball. And because of the start of the Appy League for the first time in more than two decades, he's been around for all of the softball season. Normally, if you're a coach at the minor league level for a major league organization, you're going off to spring training, February, whether it's in Arizona, whether it's in Florida, and then you've got a season that runs all the way until Labor Day. And so this is a happy time in their household. And, and I love the way that, you know, they learn from each other, they've grown, and, and they share that knowledge, you know, they've, they've been speakers together, various conventions, and, uh, you know, they just, they're not afraid to share that knowledge, what they learn from each other and what they take from each other. Moore is down on strikes, punched out by Christina Drum, the home plate umpire. Alexander gets her fifth strikeout and the first out here in the last of the fourth. Well, this pitch really crosses the outer part of the plate. It is a strike, but it really crosses up Burnett, so it, it looks a little more awkward than it was, but the, the pitch was actually a great location. It was the movement of the catcher kind of threw everybody off. Second time up for Kim Wirt now, who's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And for the Anderson household, too, you know, as we've all changed our routines during the pandemic, Carol, for you and I, we've been calling games from home, and now we get to be on the road, which is great. And they've spent more time together as well, and that includes cooking dinner for each other. If you're home, and you're not the only one home, all of a sudden you got to feed two. <laughs> and Coach Anderson, of the softball side said that she's not spent as many late nights at, in her office at the softball facility as well, making an effort to be home with her husband, Patrick. And they also got a new addition to their family. They're, they had a new dog during quarantine. Of course, the dog's name is Rally. That's what they're looking for right now. And who doesn't need more dogs? Always want more. Two and one to work. That pushes her off the plate. Three and one. Well, I've just been so impressed tonight from both pitchers with Weber. Missouri, Alexander with JMU just really have controlled the game from the circle. You just don't see that too much anymore, especially when you're facing the type of hitters. But you go back to just the amount of time you have to prepare. 
I can't imagine the amount of hours that both the James Madison staff, Missouri staff, has spent literally watching the same hitters. You know, just repetitions, various at-bats, and uh, putting together a plan for them on how to attack. And, and so far, it's working in this in this game. What's a safe estimate for how many hours of film a coach might watch these days getting ready for an opponent? Well, I'd, I'd like to think most coaches are, if, if, if it's available, if there's film available, they're watching, you know, 40 to 50 at-bats per player. So, you know, some coaches in terms of time frame, you know, it just depends how long they want to study and, and spend time on each hitter. But it's, it's a significant amount of time. As Alexander looks for a put-away pitch here as well, we talked earlier about her changeup and the development of that and how she worked with Libby Morris to add that pitch to her repertoire. Started to develop it in the fall. When she worked on it against her own hitters, she started to figure out what she was going to bring with her regular arsenal, adding that extra pitch to disappear under the bats of hitters has made her that much more effective. To back strikeouts for Alexander. She's retired the first two here in the fourth, six on the night. Goes back upstairs with a low rise ball. And Alexander is dealing tonight. Heating the ball up to 68, 69, 70 miles an hour. We're halfway through the game, and she continues to have that good velocity. And Love the fact that she continues to reinvent herself by learning a changeup later in her career. Saw what it did for Megan Good later in her career, really bought in and such a good athlete, able to, able to learn it very quickly. She struck out 16. And her conference tournament struck out 19 last week against Liberty, a new James Madison record. Up to six here. And behind 2-0 on Kessinger. Who graduated in December with a degree in hospitality management. But with players who have to make that choice about coming back for the extra year, not sure if she's going to be there just yet. It's about listening to her body. Having gone through surgery that caused her to miss the 2019 season. From thoracic outlet syndrome. And that compresses blood vessels or nerves, causes pain and numbness. And certainly doubt as well for her. Wasn't sure if she was going to be able to be back at the same level of play, the same type of player that she once was. But here she is in the postseason. Two victories away from sending Mizzou to the Women's College World Series for the seventh time. I like what I'm seeing from Missouri. You know, they're having a tough time catching up to the speed, to the movement of Alexander. So a lot of these hitters through the lineup have that combination of, of speed and power. We saw Wilmus. Try to drag bunt, Laird did indeed put the ball in the dirt. Just, just was thrown out. Now we see Kessinger just trying to make something happen, force the defense to make plays. Not really seen the defense of either team be challenged yet this evening. Swing and a miss, strike three. She strikes out the side and has now racked up seven strikeouts through four innings. Odyssey Alexander going head to head with Jordan Weber here in the opener of this best two out of three Super Regional. The Tigers and the Dukes in a pitcher's duel. This game is stubbornly scoreless. You're watching the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. 
And it's best two out of three to earn your trip to the Women's College World Series. No postseason last year. These teams are hungry to get to Oklahoma City. Georgia, an unseeded team with a win earlier today. And James Madison, one of three unseeded teams here in the postseason, still in search of its first base hit of the day. Here as we start the fifth, a team is already on to the Women's College World Series, a walk-off for Florida State. How about that as they go to Baton Rouge and take two? On the road, doing it at LSU, Florida State from the ACC punches that first ticket. Two close ball games, one run victories. And the Seminoles, last time we saw them in the postseason was back in 2019 when they were a powerhouse long ball squad. They did it differently this year, and it was even a split effort. Four and a third and four and two thirds in the circle between two pitchers today. Yeah, not just the pitching by committee, but one of the most savvy base running teams in the nation. They just know how to take the extra base. They played small ball to perfection this year. Sacrifice flies, just scratching out runs, finding ways to win. Congratulations to Florida State as they head to Oklahoma City. The 2018 national champions, only team out of the ACC to have won it, make their return to the field of eight next week. They were a little overshadowed in the ACC this year with the relative youth of the Clemson and Duke programs and the success that they had, their long winning streaks. But it's Florida State who remains. Lindsey Meeks, a strikeout, her first time up in the second. She has been absolutely racking up the road miles as of late, as Meeks has enrolled in PT school at Ohio University, Athens, Ohio. So here's what her life has been like over the last couple of weeks. The CAA championship game, and then, oh, by the way, school is underway in Athens, so it's drive to school, have orientation, then drive back to Harrisonburg, Virginia, then go to Knoxville for regionals, back to Athens, and now traveling with her team to make it here to Columbia. She's down on strikes for the second time. Seventh strikeout for Weber, but that's dedication to go right into PT school after you finished up your undergraduate career and to have to juggle being a Division I softball player in the postseason. Jordan Weber has allowed just one base runner tonight. That was a walk to Lauren Burnett, who's on deck, back in the third. Since then, seven in a row retired. An appeal down to first. And the answer is no swing from William Lopez, the first base umpire. Jordan Weber has not given in. As you see her hold back, Hall's able to keep her barrel behind the plate, but she has not given in to the middle of the plate. I haven't seen one pitch that she's done that. Just tremendous focus, tremendous command on the ball. Does that take intention to say, I'm not going to give them anything to hit? It takes execution. It takes tremendous focus. You know, it's, it's, it's making sure every pitch is done with precision. And Bailey is out. She calls for it. Inning over. Another one, two, three frame for Jordan Weber. He's already thrown one no-hitter in the postseason. Why not try for another?
We are locked in a pitcher's duel in Columbia. Jordan Weber throwing the ball with great velocity and matching that is Odyssey Alexander. Neither pitcher giving in to the middle of the plate. They are stretching the zone. They are in command. And that's why there are a lot of zeros on the scoreboard matching. Look at that pitch for pitch. Seven strikeouts, just the one walk, one hit given up by Alexander. Both pitchers have great command, great focus. Odyssey Alexander settles in here in the last of the fifth. Bottom half of the order coming up for Missouri. It starts with Cassidy Shoma. One of just two Tigers to reach base this evening. As she walked with two out in the second. I, I think what makes this pitching duel even more impressive is these teams are known for their offense. Yes, Alexander has, has been the it factor for JMU, undefeated on the season at, at 14 and 0. Was injured part of the season, that's why it is only 14 and 0, so to speak. But these teams are known for their offense, on base percentage, slugging percentage, home runs, hits. These are two of the top teams in the nation in terms of offense. And so you've got to really credit both pitchers tonight for really stretching the zone, staying in command, moving the ball through the zone. That's got to be a bit of a chilling effect on the hitters too, as they've gotten a combined one for 28 tonight to come up and try and do what their teammates have not been able to do. Yeah, you're, fi you're fighting that mental challenge. Like, you know, who's going to break through? Who's going to do it? It just takes one. But uh, hitting can be contagious and sometimes not hitting can be contagious, but all it takes is someone on the team to step up, be that spark plug. We really haven't even seen the ball squared up all that much this evening. The best ones have gone foul so far tonight. Odyssey Alexander with her fourth straight strikeout, eighth on the evening. We are back at the beach and better than ever for the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. I'll tell you what, that sounds really good tonight where it's about 50 degrees here. And for more information, go online, stpeakclearwaterelitinvite.com. We hope to see you in February of next year. And the last time that JMU and Missouri squared off was a marathon ball game in Clearwater, Florida. The JMU ended up winning that game in eight innings. Both teams very competitive and we talked about this earlier, but both coaches go way back. You know, Lauren Laporte has been, been at JMU for a long time as an assistant coach, now the head coach. Larissa Anderson, assistant coach, associate head coach, and then head coach at Hofstra, so in the Colonial. Many battles. Off of Alexander's glove, a beautiful backhand over to first. Let's go to the studio, Chris and Jen with an update from the West Coast. Hoping to even up that series one game apiece after Achille Rochard and the Virginia Tech Hokies took game number one. That's shallow short. And put away. Alexander continues her dominance in the circle. Just one total hit through five in Columbia.
The NCAA Softball Super Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Are you experiencing loneliness? Have you not been visited over the last couple of hours? Are you a square 60 feet away from home plate? Yes, third base has been quite lonely tonight here in this game. No runner has reached third base as we have been treated to an epic pitcher's duel between Odyssey Alexander of James Madison and Jordan Weber of Missouri, who reassumes her spot in the circle. We go to the sixth with no score. I'm Mike Cousins. She's Carol Bruggeman, the former Division I coach, executive director of the NFCA. This has been a treat as Jordan Weber has picked up where she left off from last weekend. Look at what she has done in the NCAA tournament. Just one hit in 18 innings pitched, the 21 strikeouts. And Weber was solid all season long, but the performance she has turned in in the postseason is a different level. Handling that pressure, actually elevating her game within the moment. This here is the one batter she's allowed to reach base, Lauren Burnett, with a one-out walk back in the third. So carrying yet another no-hitter here into the sixth inning for Jordan Weber. Not uncommon territory for her. A rare ground ball, and it's misplayed by Laird over at shortstop. There had not been a ground ball since one in the first inning. Exactly what JMU needed. Forced the Missouri defense to make some plays. Even though they have been stellar all season long, they, they haven't had to field. This is the second ground ball all game long. And lay, this ball jumps up on layer, does not attack the ball. That is what JMU needed, a leadoff batter on. So an error on the shortstop Laird gives JMU a base runner. Ali Tress, pinch runner at first. Out, the bunt attempt, and it's popped up. Wirt, who encroached from third, and one of the easiest plays of the day as Gravity handled the rest once she got into the right position. You're facing a rise ball pitcher. Look right away, Sullivan's barrel drops all the way to her belt. That bat has got to stay at the top of the strike zone. Put that ball in the dirt. Top of the order with Gordon. Goes after the first pitch she sees. Pops it over to first and foul ground. Robbie secures it in the leather. And after a leadoff base runner to quickly extinguish, bring up Sarah Juvis. And right back to two fly outs. And that is what Jordan Weber does. Spins the ball up in the zone. So important to stay on top. Barrel the ball up. We've seen what can happen when you put the ball in the dirt. She's grounded to third and flied out in foul ground out to left. James Madison enters a super regional round. Just two wins away from moving on to the Women's College World Series for the first time. And Missouri trying to get there for the seventh time. Zoo has gone in 83, 91, 94, and then 2009, 10, and 11. And that is a strikeout for Weber, her eighth of the night. It polishes off the JMU sixth. Alexander and Weber, eight strikeouts apiece.
The last time that the Women's College World Series was played in 2019, UCLA emerged the victors. And they are in action tonight, down 0-1 against Virginia Tech, trying to even up that best of three at one game apiece. As we are on the road back to the Women's College World Series, seeding began in 2005. 113 out of 120 teams to make the Women's College World Series have been seeded. Here are the ones that have not been seeded. Three in this postseason, including James Madison tonight, but it hasn't happened for anybody, Carol, since 2012. And Georgia is now ahead, one to zero against Florida. You mentioned Virginia Tech playing tonight for an opportunity to punch their ticket. JMU would like to add to that list of unseeded teams getting a win here in the Super Regional. Abby George leads it off with a slap to shortstop, and Sarah Jubis was ready for it. Opportunities on the infield have been few and far between, but she pounced. Jubis has been so solid for JMU. Love the energy she brings to the team. Really been clutch, all especially here in the postseason for JMU. And the advantage certainly belongs to the home team, historically speaking, since Super Regionals came to be in 2005. Home teams have won the series 77% of the time. And a huge crowd on hand here tonight at Mizzou Softball Stadium. They just announced it a couple minutes ago. 2,632, a record for this facility. The author of the lone base hit of the night, Brooke Wilmes. tonight has had as much action as a dance club for introverts. That misses from Alexander, and it's 3-0. This ballpark opened in 2017, and the last super hosted here was 2016 for Mizzou. Right when the gates opened, a few hours before first pitch, fans began screaming in from their tailgate spots outside. And that is ball four to Wilmis. First base runner for Mizzou since her single in the third. And with her speed, this is a chance to create havoc for the Tigers. Now Wilmis is that catalyst. This gives her team a lot of confidence. It's infectious. Now that her team has seen her draw, walk, in on base, this is their third time through the lineup, third time seeing Alexander. against Alexander, has popped out back to the circle and grounded out to third. There goes Wilmis. The throw down to second is off target. The stolen base puts her in scoring position. Just the second Tiger to advance that far this evening. I oh, love the aggressiveness here from Missouri. Nothing happening on offense. Well, let's try it with our legs. And Brooke Wilmis easily gets to second base. Missouri has a runner in scoring position. You know, when, when the bats aren't coming through, when you haven't had as many hits as you'd like, as many base runners, you've got to make some things happen. With the walk to Wilmis, the stolen base, 
Missouri finds themselves knocking on the door to get on the board. Wilmis was pumping up the crowd from second. Her teammates handled the rest from the dugout. As Alexander is behind 1-0 on the SEC Freshman of the Year, Jenna Laird. Lauded by her coaching staff for her composure. Back to action. Alexander pumps in strike one. Well, Laird, as a freshman, is the leading hitter on this Missouri team that is really having an outstanding season. Missouri could use one of those hits from her right now. Swing and a miss at the 1-1. I mean, how about the composure of Alexander? I mean, just steady, solid, not too high, not too low. But you can feel the competitiveness just exuding off her. She hasn't lost a game this year. The one, two, disappears behind the plate in just the second at bat of the entire game with a runner in scoring position. The only other one was when Emma Robbie came up with Shomo at second in Mizzou's second. The Dukes of JMU on a 27 game winning streak. And a one, two tails up and away from Laird. Alexander comes back and gets her ninth strikeout a massive second out. Talk about a momentum shifter. This pitch just drives away from Laird. It's not a strike, but with two strikes, it breaks late, and Laird can't hold up. Larissa Anderson said that for Hattie Moore, her at-bats only get better and better throughout the game. Third time up, she struck out twice. And her swings, she says, are angry. She's trying to hit it as hard as she can. I mean, talk about taking your hack. She's got Wilmis at second. Just gets a piece of that pitch, 0-2. A base hit could make her the first run of the game, and with the way things are going, one run may be enough to win it tonight. And Alexander continues to work from ahead. And of colossal importance, if Missouri scores here, James Madison has three outs to work with. Always the best time to score when you're the home team is the bottom of the sixth. Best time to take the lead with the score because to your point, you go out on defense and you need three outs, game over. Obviously, Alexander has something to say about that. Alexander here. I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead in the count. I'm going to throw one out of the zone. Patty Moore is being very aggressive at the plate. Saw her get ahead 0-1 on a pitch out of the zone. Might be able to get her swinging and missing if she can really stretch that zone. The 0-2. 
Just a little bit late on it as she turns it long and foul into the parking lot. We parked over there. It's a rental. This next pitch here for Alexander will be her 90th of the night. But she's shown she can go deep into games, deep into extra innings, having thrown 355 pitches throughout the course of their three regional victories in Knoxville, Tennessee. Nine strikeouts on the evening so far, just has given up the one hit. Coach Morris going out to have a conversation with her senior. We mentioned earlier, way ahead in the count, but having a tough time right now getting Hattie Moore to swing and miss. And staring down a possible disaster with a runner at second. Will miss the walk, a stolen base, her 17th in 20 tries this year. Be off on anything off the bat with two outs. Another 0-2, popped out to short. Jubis makes the call, makes the catch. And the siren song of a runner at second does not bother Odyssey. Inning over. We welcome you back to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. On to the seventh inning between Missouri and James Madison, the opener of this best two out of three Super Regional. And it's belonged to the pitchers tonight who have been dominant from start to here in the seventh. Hey, look what they have done throughout the NCAA tournament, especially the last number, the strikeouts, and the longer this game goes, James Madison had tight games throughout their entire regional. They had extra in game against Liberty. They battled against Tennessee. They had to really work to get out of that regional. For Missouri, it was the exact opposite. They, they were not, you know, really challenged as they had three, you know, three shutouts and uh, outscored their opponents 17 to zero. So, you know, the, the edge here kind of been there, done that last weekend to James Madison. Duke's hitters are 0 for 19 at the plate today. And the lone base hit of the game belongs to Brooke Wilmis for Missouri as she was left standing at second base in the last of the sixth. Weber's 1-1, down and away. There's always the question that if you're an unseeded team, look, a difficult night to hit just became a little bit more difficult as you add some moisture to the equation. But there's the question, as there was for Virginia Tech, which won its opener for Georgia, which won earlier today against Florida, a perennial visitor to Oklahoma City in June, of are you for real? Because if you were to rank the conferences, the Colonial Athletic would not be in your top five, not in your top 10 in college softball. And so they come in with one loss against an Elon team that finished three games under 500, and yet they're showing their medal tonight. Yeah, really were limited in terms of their non-conference scheduling, so, you know, had to. Chopper to short, throw on to first is not in time. It is a base hit for Odyssey Alexander, and how appropriate for the opposing pitcher to break up a no-hit bid from Jordan Weber. But Odyssey Alexander doing it all for her team, just showing you her hustle. Slayer doesn't field the ball cleanly. Attacks it, kind of sits back a little bit, attacks it a little late. You can see it rolls up her chest a little bit, and Alexander easily gets to first base. Once again, James Madison, this is the, the second inning in a row where they've had the leadoff batter on. So the first
first base hit given up tonight for Weber. And that does nothing to diminish the tremendous postseason that she's putting together. As she finished off the regional round with a no-hitter against Iowa State. Following up on a one-hitter in her opener. One hit allowed tonight. And James, Madison James Madison's goal now is to stretch that one hit into at least one run and put the pressure on Mizzou in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, JMU is not a big bunting team. No slappers in the lineup. Last time they had a runner at first, tried to bunt, popped it up. This time Coach Laporte was allowing Logan Newt to swing away. Again, this is the third time through the lineup against Weber. We've seen a lot of fly balls, a lot of strikeouts. And allowing this power part of the lineup to, to really swing away, try to drive one to the gap. And she chases way out of the strike zone. Weber's got her ninth strikeout. Coach Anderson talks about the fact that Weber's ball just doesn't go straight. It does funny things at times. A little bit of funny things going on there. It was up, it was out, clearly out of the strike zone. But that's what Jordan Weber can do. She can throw a low rise, high rise, complete command. Madison Nyokis. So the streak for Weber going back to the game against UIC in the opening game of their regional, top of the sixth inning. And then the no-hitter against Iowa State here tonight. 13 and two-thirds straight innings without allowing a base hit until the leadoff single here from Odyssey Alexander. And Alexander at first does not have a stolen base attempt this year. Yeah, they're gonna have to string a few together here. It's not easy to do tonight. I I can't remember seeing quite so many zeros in a long time, you know, on the scoreboard. Just one hit each for each team. And that is a direct reflection of the type of performance we've seen in the circle from both pitchers this evening. Weber's 1-2, gets the left tricep of Niokas. And she is headed down to first base, giving James Madison it's first runner in scoring position here in the seventh. This is the first one that gets away from Weber. Remember, if Niokas is in the batter's box, doesn't have to move. Ball gets her. Coach Anderson wants a discussion about that. Was the elbow, did she stick it out over the plate? And, uh, did indeed get hit in the box. So we're getting a multitude of infield interlocution here from Missouri, where they've got to talk about a situation that they have not been in in quite some time, having a runner in scoring position. We have not had the opportunity to see that much at all from JMU, and, and that does develop the conversation about where to position the infield. We're in the seventh inning here, and got a little action in the bullpen with Emma Nichols. Leads the country and saves, getting her warmed up, comes in in much more short game situations. JMU has an opportunity. We've seen both teams have some opportunities. Last inning, Missouri had a runner at second base. Couldn't get her across. James Madison has the opportunity to do so here in the top of the seventh. Their leader, the third baseman, Lindsey Meeks. A very discerning batter who led the CAA in walks this year. Thirty-seven walks on the season. Remember, James Madison has only played thirty-eight games. Now that's 
Phillips just a hair under one walk per game. Alexander at second, and Niokas at first. JMU and Mizzou scoreless in the seventh. Two and one. And appeal to a check swing. The answer is no, she held up. Advancing in the postseason is all about timely hitting. We have not seen that this evening. Meeks with a chance to come up with that big hit for her team. And a chance to have the bases loaded as well. The outfield giving a little bit of leeway in the gap in right center field, not by much, against Meeks. offering turns into a foul ball three and two James Madison entered this postseason with their eyes on their first trip to the Women's College World Series second straight postseason where they've reached supers and a 3-2, grounder left side, diving stop by Laird, but she has no play as the bases are full of purple, gold, and white with just one out. Well, how about this at bat by Lindsey Meeks, just battles and battles, gets a hit. An even better effort by Jenna Laird by saving that ball on the infield prevents James Madison with the opportunity to score. Lindsay Meeks is the energy, the fire for James Madison. Shows you a little bit of that right there. JMU was 0 for 19 coming into this inning. Now a couple of base hits, the bases are loaded. And the redshirt freshman, Emily Phillips, is called upon to pinch hit here. With just one out. On an unusually cold night, what a spot to be called upon here, off the bench, to try and provide perhaps a game-winning swing. And her 0-1 is flared out. There it chases, it drops! And James Madison is on the board! Alexander comes around to score. A bloop, pinch, hit, RBI single for Emily Phillips. 1-0 Dukes. What a moment for Emily Phillips, then sitting in the dugout, waiting for her opportunity, gets called upon in the top of the seventh, base is loaded, gets enough of this ball, and it's able to drop. Odyssey Alexander scores James Madison on the board. So it ends a string of more than 22 scoreless innings. By Mizzou pitching as Weber goes 1-1 here on Lauren Burnett. Well, this is where it's so important for Weber to keep that focus, keep that composure. There's still only one out in this inning with the bases loaded. Try to limit the damage. That's into left, Shomo retreats. She makes the catch, throws to the plate. Niokas is in with a left-hand swipe tag. 2-0 JMU in the seventh. A 
It has been all James Madison in the seventh inning. The eight batter, Lauren Burnett with the sack fly. JMU has their fastest base runner and Niokas at third. They double the lead here in the seventh. This inning started with an Odyssey Alexander infield single and continues to the bottom of the lineup with Michelle Sullivan. Weber and out away from bringing the dangerous Tiger lineup to the plate. That timely hitting has come through for James Madison and it's come from the bottom of the lineup. Pinch hitter Emily Phillips in the seven spot. Lauren Burnett, the eight hitter with the sack fly. It's the bottom of the order that has come through with the RBI here in the seventh. And JMU had nothing coming into this inning. They were 0 for 19 at the plate. They'd had just two base runners. Burnett had reached on a walk and on an error. And that had been it. Well, let's go back to their regional. They were battle tested in that regional. Extra inning victory against Liberty, tight game against Tennessee. Well, this is, this is what James Madison has been living throughout their entire regional. Wins in the regional, 4-3, 3-1, 8-5. Nothing where you could breathe easy. Well, there is no doubt that in the bottom of the seventh inning, it is going to get very loud here. And the largest crowd in the history of Mizzou Softball Stadium. Ready to cheer on the Tigers. But a JMU contingent that has made itself well known as well. It's in this inning, you saw in that Mizzou bullpen, Emma Nichols started to get loose. The trouble was brewing, and it has boiled over for Jordan Weber. And that's where that second run, this is a Missouri offense that can score as well and where in a game like this where the, the pitchers have really controlled the majority of this game go from a one run lead in the seventh to a two run lead a chance to add to that now big difference and with that flare to third the inning is over the no hitter is gone the shutout is gone and now just three outs remain for the tigers to put something on the board Now it's time for our Capital One rewarding performance, Odyssey Alexander in the circle. She has been composed. She has been throwing with great velocity, in complete command, working all parts of the zone. Her team is playing with confidence behind her. Nine strikeouts heading into the bottom of the seventh. She's been the difference maker so far for James Madison. Just three outs away from putting them within seven innings of the school's first trip to the Women's College World Series. Back in 2016, 2019, they found themselves into Supers. So for the second straight postseason, here they are. And a team that had been used to outscoring their opponents has raised their level as the opposition has been more difficult here in the postseason as well. 37-1 this year on a 27-game winning streak. Trying to make it 28. Odyssey Alexander starts off with Kim Wirt in the cleanup spot for Mizzou. James Madison finished the regular season with an ERA of 1-4-0. Good for fifth in the country. Word here at the plate with big power. Yeah! 
Well, Missouri has been here many times throughout their season. They have the type of offense that is primed. However, they are 0-13 when trailing after six innings. Wirt leaves it playable for Meeks. One away. Carol, one thing that has stood out from James Madison today is never, even as they were being no hit through six innings, did they appear to be rattled in any way. Just completely composed, and I think that starts with Odyssey Alexander in the circle. Just the way she manages the game, ultra competitive, still can flash a smile to her teammates, keeps them loose. That you can feel the team just feed off Odyssey Alexander and her performance. Kayla Kessinger is 0 for 2 against the redshirt senior pitcher. Having flied out to center and struck out. And Alexander still throwing with great velocity. We're into the bottom of the seventh here, and she's still catching the upper 60s up to 70 miles an hour. And from the moment anyone in Columbia today woke up, turned aside the window shade and looked outside. This had all the makings of a February or March day. But the implications for this game, as rain continues to fall as it has over the last several innings, are exponentially bigger than one of those early season non-conference matchups. We saw Virginia Tech, the unseeded team, upset UCLA last night. We saw Georgia, the unseeded team, upset Florida today. May have the chance to go three for three today with the unseeded teams. And the last two pitches, there are many wearing purple in the stands who are wondering, along with Odyssey Alexander, where they missed. Yeah, she has been, Alexander has been right around the strike zone all day today. Just two walks, only free passes of the day. There's a strike to get to three and two. Well, being down three one, does not want to give in for the walk. That's just pure heat right on the outer half of the plate. Nine strikeouts on the evening for Alexander. Needs just two outs on the evening. Her 99th pitch of the night came in at 70 miles an hour. I mean, that's, that's what you want when you start the game at 70 miles an hour. Can you sustain that type of velocity through seven innings? And we have seen that Alexander can indeed do that. Such a great athlete. That's where all that conditioning pays off. That's down and away. Ball four. So Kessinger is on. Missouri down 2 nothing here in the last of the seventh inning. Will bring the tying run to the plate. Cassidy Shomo getting ready to come up for the Tigers. Mizzou goes pinch runner at first base for Kessinger. She shares a word with Shomo on her way back to the third base dugout. Anna McGivern takes her spot at first base.
So 100 pitches in. Odyssey Alexander is right where she wants to be. Just a couple outs away from being seven innings from Oklahoma City. And continuing to throw the ball not only at 70 miles an hour, but spinning the ball through the zone. A lot of swings and misses from Missouri. Something we don't see a great deal of. Usually they're barreling the ball up pretty well. Well, that's a credit to Alexander. This has been a showcase year for Cassidy Shomo. So a limited time at Louisiana, sat out last year, has been down at the plate the last couple weeks has an opportunity to wipe it all away here. And Shomo does have home run type power, has, does have three home runs on the season, just missed on that last pitch as she fouled it straight back, right on time. Field is back except for at third with a runner on at first. With that ball in the dirt, there was a little bit of a dance off of first base there from McGiver. Shiflet playing back at first, not able to sneak in behind for a tap. And we have seen Lauren Burnett save several balls from going back to the backstop and allowing the runners to advance. Two is lined down the right field line. It curves foul. Aspirations were momentarily high for several thousand here in Columbia. Instead, she goes back to the right-hand batter's box, two and two. The hat is inside out. The jacket is inside out. And everybody's feeling upside down. And what was a pitcher's duel? Three hits, two runs in the top of the seventh for JMU. Looking for an upset win on the road in game number one. Best two out of three series. And the count is full. Really good at bat from Shomo. She's been able to handle pitches on both sides of the plate, fouling off the pitches on the inside. We've seen what she can do with the outside pitch, driving it deep to the wall. Really challenging Alexander. Alexander's payoff pitch. Strikeout number 10. And the Dukes are one out away from victory. Full count, no problem for Alexander. Goes back upstairs. Little low rise ball, jumping late. And Odyssey Alexander is one out away from leading her team to the first victory in this Super Regional. Emma Robbie at the plate. Represents the tying run for Missouri. I mean, after, after watching that last pitch, could it be that Alexander's even getting better here in the later innings? Throwing the ball hard, locating, determined.
Coach Laporte talked a lot about Odyssey Alexander's maturity and her growth and said she is just really learning to embrace the hard. We've seen that throughout the postseason in the regionals. Seen it here tonight. It's two and one on Robbie. The evening for Alexander has been relatively routine. One, two, three first, four batters in the second as she issued a walk. Gave up a hit in the third, a four batter inning. Struck out the side in the fourth. A one, two, three fifth, and a four batter sixth. And Robbie is the fourth to come to the plate here in the seventh. The Tigers' hopes rise once again as it's three and one. Well, we've seen her get to full count a couple times in this inning. Now working from behind. You can see the precipitation in the air. Falling, trying to manage that as well. Everybody has been trying to find a way to stay warm tonight. And now Robbie and Alexander are in the heat of the moment. Check swing on the 3-1. Did she go? No. That's ball four. Two walks in the seventh. And Missouri will bring the winning run to the plate. And Alexander wants the strike on this pitch. Very that close. Miss? It looks like a darn good pitch. A little bit inside, but not by much. Alex, that's what Alexander, they went for the check call, and she kind of wanted the, the strike on the pitch. I, I can't say I disagree with her. Bonnie Mintz will pitch run for Emma Robbie at first. Representing the tying run for the Tigers. With Kendall Bailey coming up. Zelma Givern at second, Mint at first. Ball in the dirt, it bounces away behind Burnett. The Tigers have runners at second and third. This seems like a good time for a visit to the circle. Uh, the first one that gets away from Alexander and from Burnett comes at a very timely moment for Missouri. No hits yet in this inning. Missouri looking for a, a timely one right now. I mean, Missouri has one hit in this ball game, the entire game. And one more could tie things up. Bailey's had a big year. This could be her biggest swing yet. First time that Missouri has hit a runner on third tonight. As they trail 2-0 last to the seven. Down to their final out here in game number one. Alexander bounces another one. Yeah, you 
just start to wonder. We haven't seen that happen the entire game. A little more rain coming down now, a little more precipitation in the air. We've seen her bounce a few of them. You see her pitching coach Morris just, you know, asking if she wants a towel. Keep things a little more dry. Bailey fouls back at 2-1. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, 2-0 two JMU. This is what you wait for. When you start things off in February with just a hope and a dream, and it becomes an opportunity here on Memorial Day weekend. Alexander with 10 strikeouts tonight. And her 2-2 runs the count full. She can't believe it. You see it shaking her head in a circle. This is the same pitch to Robbie. And this one a little more down in the zone than the last one, but you can see Alexander just really trying to will herself, will this team to victory. And Missouri is knocking on the door, potentially tying this game up. Alexander taking a lot more time between pitches right now just to gather herself. Her 3-2 is high and it's ball four. It's gathered by Burnett. The bases are loaded. And still no hits in this inning. Alexander just having all kinds of control problems after being in complete control the entire evening. Bases loaded now, two outs for Missouri. JMU clinging to this two-run lead. Trouble has made itself an unwelcome visitor here in the seventh inning for both teams. No hitter broken up top seven. And after Alexander had struck out nine and walked just two, the first six innings, she has struck out one and walked the bases loaded here in the seventh. Alex Honold comes in to pinch hit for Abby George in the number nine spot. The freshman from Iowa with the game on the line. Senior to a freshman. Ball one. Oh, it was a pinch hitter for JMU, Emily Phillips. That got JMU on the board. Can Missouri do the same thing with a pinch hitter here in the bottom of the seventh? strike zone has disappeared from Odyssey Alexander. And these are the times where Coach LaPorte has said she has really grown. She's learned how to manage her emotions in these situations. They are being challenged right now in this situation. Fifth straight batter with a three ball count. And that 
That's ball four. It's two to one in the seventh inning. Like a stock market crash, the strike zone appears to have no bottom at the moment. Alexander continues to go to that pitch on the outer half of the plate. Not able to find the zone. It is not missing by much, but it has been three straight walks after just two the entire game. That's the fourth walk in this inning and the third in a row for Ale Odyssey Alexander. And the degree of difficulty gets cranked up here. That was the nine spot in the order. Granted a pinch hitter. But now you're back to the top with Brooke Wilmis. Bases are loaded. And a base hit could win it in walk-off fashion for Missouri. And remember, Missouri has one hit in this game. And yet here they are knocking on the door with their leadoff hitter and an opportunity to not only tie this game, but potentially walk it off. Romis has that only hit. Back in the third. Runners at every base. A big hack. And she sends the Tigers down to their final strike. The rain has stopped as the skies now have stopped to watch and see who wins this game. The 0-2 is swung on, fly to left. Gordon is under it. She makes the catch. And James Madison is a winner in Columbia, just one victory away from a trip to Oklahoma City. You can't give enough credit to Odyssey Alexander and her teammates fighting through some adversity in the seventh inning, the disappointment from Wilmis and her Missouri teammates. But James Madison in a pitcher's duel, just four hits in the game, finds a way to earn the first game victory in the Super Regional. They took everything they had Odyssey Alexander with a tremendous marathon effort once again from start to finish, providing everything that James Madison needed in the circle as she struck out 10 and weathered six walks, four of them in the final frame. So three for three in their first games. The unseeded teams are off to a good start as Georgia beat Florida earlier. And James Madison will come back tomorrow and take on Missouri once more in this best two out of three series. Alexander, her ninth start of 10 or more strikeouts this season, propels the Dukes to a 2-1 victory. Thanks so much for being with us. A chilly evening in Columbia. Warmer weather tomorrow with a lot on the line. For our entire crew, my partner, Kara Bugaman, I'm Mike Cousins saying thanks for watching and good night from Columbia.